And I think last year in the state of Ohio, we have 15,000 foreclosures. That's appalling. And that's because they're lending, they were lending money, let me reiterate that, to people who didn't have good credit and who probably didn't deserve to own a home. You still have an opportunity to own a home at 3.5% down, but let me ask you this question. How much are um, real estate commissions? Does anybody know? <coughs> Roughly, percentage? 6%? 6, 7? Okay. And then if you have to sell your house, you have closing costs, right? How much is that? 2, 3%? So what does that equal? 10%, okay, we're all mathematicians in here. So if you lose your job and you, you're forced to sell by putting 10% down, then you're at least setting yourself up for success. So um, conversely with an investment property, because that's kind of what we're talking about today is 20% down. The banks aren't gonna lend you any money unless you have 20% down to purchase the property. They've gotten a little bit wise. There's no more of those liar loans or you know stated assets, stated income. So you really have to come to the table, show your cards, and, and show that you're a credit-worthy borrower. But what about outside of that 20%? What happens if the furnace goes? Anybody know how much a furnace is? Roughly three grand. Is that fair? So, or if in that investment property you have a tenant, and God forbid the tenant doesn't pay you and moves out and then doesn't tell you, and they put holes in the drywall and they ruin your carpet because they had three dogs that you didn't know about and four cousins that were also living there. Has that ever happened to anybody in here or is it just me? Okay, so we got some landlords in the crowd that know that. So the biggest thing, one of the biggest things to take away from today is if you're gonna be an investor or own an investment property is please have at least four or $5,000 set off to the side. That would be called the emergency fund, Charlie. So when that does happen, not if, when it does happen, then you're ready to react. And you're not scrambling and, um, you know, I know all the mistakes that I've made in real estate, and I've made all of them, just so you know, is um, trying to leverage. You hear about no money down, you hear about leverage. Well, leverage is great, but if you don't have cash to back yourself up, some reserves over here, then you shouldn't even really be um, playing in the game. Assemble your team, getting the right people on the bus. You know, if you want to buy a piece of real estate, and I would argue that if you're just going to buy a home, you know, pick a real estate agent who's experienced. Interview three of them. You know, I'm not just saying use me. There's other realtors in the room. There's a lot of great realtors in Northeastern Ohio. Find out what their experience is. You know, if you came to me and you said, hey, I want to buy an industrial property, I don't know anything. About that so I'm not going to claim that I do but I can put you in touch with somebody that does so it's really important to do your homework and do your due diligence mortgage lending and financing is probably one of the biggest pivot points now if you're buying real estate make sure that um, you know you're working most of the time now it's banks right anybody see any mortgage companies going out of business that's pretty commonplace today they put some stringent requirements on the lenders now because of all the bad lending so make sure you have two or three people that you can go to for different types of financing. There's uh, FHA has a 203K program right now that some of you may or may not know about. If you purchase your home, you can borrow the repairs. The banks are kind of getting smart. We got all these beat up junker properties in the suburbs. How are we gonna sell them? Because all of the first time home buyers are FHA. You know, and it was funny, I had, we had a meeting at my office. There was 50 people in the room and I said, how many people in here are representing somebody with 20% down? Out of 50 real estate agents, I think two hands shut up. So the reality is the majority of the people are buying with 3.5% down, doing that FHA. And although I don't advocate that, if you do have to do that, and you buy the property right, for instance, if you have a $200,000 house and you buy it for 150, then in that case, I would probably counsel you to go ahead. Um, Title company, your real estate agent's probably going to have that relationship, but if you're an investor and you're buying multiple properties, you can save on the closing costs, the title fees, reissue of title insurance, that sort of thing. Some of you have, you know, um, done different real estate deals. You'll get quoted a figure and then you go to the closing table and you're like, well, what's going on here? What are all these fees, Dale? He always asks me that one. So just knowing that, having that relationship, is um, you know really a good thing, and then an attorney to help you set up your entities, limited liability companies, trusts, corporations. I'm a big fan of the LLC. So for those of you who own a rental property, what happens when your tenant falls over, and who are they going to sue? Probably you, right? 
So, you know, the insurance guy could probably tell you about uh, getting a good policy. But if, you're, if you have that vehicle, the limited liability company, then your liability is limited, hence the name. They can only, you know, you're shielded. And the other thing too is if you buy multiple properties and you have multiple LLCs, then, you know, if somebody's trying to search your assets, it's just a really good way to, you know, kind of protect yourself. Also too, if you're setting up a business, that attorney may, may be able to, to advise you on, you know, on how to set up the business. Um, so an attorney who specializes in business and real estate is a key CPA or an accountant too. If you're, uh, you know, going to buy real estate, you need to know what the tax ramifications are. What happens when I sell this property? If I buy a property and I flip it, is it regular income? Is it, am I exempt from income? You know, if you buy and sell a personal residence, a lot of you guys know if you're in it for two years and you sell it up to 250,000 for an individual and then up to a half a million for a married couple, no tax. Um, one of the things too is buying in an IRA, and we're gonna talk about that a little bit too. That's something I do have in the notes, but if you're a real estate investor in here today, I recommend you open up a self-directed IRA with Equity Trust Company. You can use that vehicle to buy real estate, sell real estate, and pay no taxes. Interesting. And your financial planners, once again, Sanjay's not here, so I can talk about this. They're not going to recommend using the self-directed IRA because they can't earn any fees on it. But I'm telling you that it's a good thing, and using that's a way to, to really build up some assets. The last thing I had on the list, which isn't in your notes, is a general contractor. If you're going to be doing any type of uh, investment in real estate, as some of you know, there's all kinds of repairs. And even if you're buying a house, how many know that when you own a house, there's maintenance? And I don't know about you guys, but if and my wife's out in the hallway, she'd tell you if I use a hammer, I'm gonna hit my thumb. So we always have to hire that out. And if you don't have a relationship with somebody that you can trust, you know, the good thing is to do is to get three different quotes on everything. And there's some good websites for that. But just really being a good steward of all the dollars. You know, if you're gonna remodel a kitchen, you could get a quote for 6,000 or 35,000. So just, and when you're investing in real estate, specifically buying and selling, that, you know, you spend an extra 10000 or 8000 um, that may be your entire profit. So just keep that in mind when you're going through that. The next one is um, set some goals as we move on here. Um, you know, we've all heard that goal setting, you know, Zig Ziglar talks about that. But even if it's as simple as, hey, I want to buy a single family home in 2012, that's my goal. Well, guess what? If you want to do it, commit it to paper and then review that goal often. It's very powerful. You know, my partner and I at one point were, were renovating 25 homes a year and every year we'd meet at the beginning of the year and say, hey, what do we want to do this year? We have a specific plan. So, you know, I'm gonna, and that's kind of what I say there. Prepare and plan and set some goals for your investing and commit them to paper. And then, you know what, it sounds silly, put it on your bathroom mirror. Because when you're brushing your teeth in the morning, oh yeah, I was supposed to buy a house. You know, or oh yeah, I was gonna buy a 20 unit apartment building. Or oh yeah, I was gonna buy a commercial building for my business. And, and it, it could be that simple, or here are the steps that I need to take to get there. Um, one of the things too with that, is in the prepare and plan stage, if you're gonna invest in real estate, pick a geographic area that you're comfortable with. So in other words, if you wanna buy a rental property and um, you know it's down on the lower west side of Cleveland in a drug-ridden neighborhood and you're a single woman, that might not be the best thing for you. You know what I mean? So, and the other thing too is when you specialize in a market, say it was Westlake, Ohio, and I'm going through all of the homes and I'm, I'm looking at them and I know the values and I know what the rents are. So you become the expert, right? You just don't rely on everybody else to do the homework for you. Um, so the, the, the next point would be after you set your goals is to um, choose your investment vehicle. So what are you comfortable with? I mean, I could talk about this subject all day long. There's so many different things, but probably most of you in here want to buy a home at one point or another or you have or you, you're looking at it. And I can tell you right now that I'm working with a client who's come to me and said, hey, I want to purchase a house. And um, if your skin is thick enough, you can go out there and buy a bank-owned property today, 20% under its value. 
on average. Now that's not going to be in every suburb, there's certain areas. Um, you know, I've been working a lot in North Ridgeville, Homestead Falls, Strongsville. You buy a $200,000 house for $160,000. It may need a little bit of repairs, but sometimes it doesn't. The, um, the other thing is a short sale. It's, everybody's heard that, that's the big buzzword, short sale. What does that mean? It means that somebody borrowed more money than their house is now worth. How did that happen? So, um, you know, the average short sale, if, you're, if you have the, um, once again, the skin that's stick in there, you can make about 22%. So what you hear from your uncle and what you hear on the TV, hey, I can kill it, I can make 50%, 60%, that's not reality. Can I make 20% on a real estate investment that doesn't need a lot of work? That's reality. And I can help you get there if, um, you know, that's one of your goals. But as we move down the list, um, I've just listed a bunch of different things for types of real estate investments, um, duplexes, apartments. One quick comment on apartments is if you're looking to uh, you know, buy an apartment, you have to have probably 20 units or more before you can hire a manager and before it makes sense. Two minutes? Okay, I'm going over. Um, but just look through all these, think about it, you know, if you have any questions on those. Um, Partnerships are a good way to make money in real estate right now. Um, if you don't have the money yourself, maybe you have a family member or a friend that has the cash or the credit, partner up with them. If you bring something to the table, hey, maybe I'll do all the work, I'll, I'll do the fix it, I'll do the find it. And that's a way to, to partner together with people to uh, make money um, in real estate now. And then getting on to the last one, because we're running short on time. Learn and do. So whatever it is, whatever your vehicle is for real estate, study it, know it. If it's short sales, there's a ton of books out there. If it's REO properties, there's a ton of books out there. If it's strip centers, if you're looking to buy a strip center for your business, study it. Get a coach. Anybody in here have a coach or personally coached? One person? I know I do. It's invaluable. There's some really reasonable coaches out there. Get a mentor. Anybody have a mentor? Somebody that's had some success before you and, and you know, somebody that you can learn from. And, um, you know, that's really um, just the main thing out there. Learn your, learn your trade and then go out and do it. And, um, you know, it's, it's not simple, but I think if you do the due diligence and you do all those things that we talked about, um, you're going to set yourself up for success. So I want to just thank you guys for this opportunity to come and speak. And if you guys have any questions or concerns, or you want to talk about anything, I'm going to hang out here afterwards. And take a good look for a homework assignment. I didn't get to go through that example, but take a good look at it. There really is a way. That's a house in North Olmsted that's a real life example that somebody's purchasing right now for 65,000 after repair value 130. So that's not hocus pocus, that's a real deal. If you want to talk about that, we can talk about that later. But thanks a lot, Pastor Paul. Everybody have a great day. Great job, Pete. And I know that he has helped my son Jordan buying a home and other people in the church as well. So definitely consider Pete in the area of real estate needs. Well, we're going to have our next speaker now talk about budgeting. Having a fine...